Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk through the step-by-step -step process of fine-tuning OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo. By the end of this video, you'll be able to customize your own large language model that's trained on your private data and accessible only by you. Fine-tuning is a powerful technique that enables you to customize an LLM by training it on your own data. You start with a base model like GPT that already has built-in knowledge and strong capabilities. And then you add additional training to improve the model's performance on your specific use case or application. My specific use case in this example will be classification of financial text. I have an app that filters and summarizes financial news. For this to work, I need to be able to classify the news releases into different categories. That way I can keep the articles that I want and get rid of the ones that I don't want. I'll be classifying news releases into one of six categories using the title. I've created a data set of a few thousand samples for this task stored in a CSV file. Each sample includes the title of a news release and the category that it falls into. I want to train the model to be really good at classifying financial text into one of these six categories. I've created three data sets, training data to train the model, validation to evaluate the model during training, and the testing data set for the final evaluation once all of the training is complete. Setting up the data is the most important part of fine tuning or training any model. The model will only be as good as the data you train it on. One of the things you can do is establish some benchmarks and check how well the model performs without fine tuning. I tested both GPT 4.0 and 3.5 Turbo on 600 testing samples using a simple zero shot prompt and got the following accuracy. 76% for 3.5 and 81% for 4.0. Given that this is a fairly straightforward task, I'd be expecting accuracy up in the high 90s. However, the zero shot prompt that I used was extremely simple. I'm really just telling it to make the classification and not giving it any guidance or examples for what text falls into which class. OpenAI suggests trying different prompts and iterating over them to see if you can improve the accuracy without fine tuning. One such method is called few shot learning where you provide several examples in the prompt. I rewrote my prompt to incorporate five examples for each of the six classes. When I reran the test with the few shot prompt, the results were impressive for 4.0, with accuracy increasing to 96%. This is pretty good accuracy, but the few shot prompt is also almost 10 times as long. And one of the benefits that OpenAI highlights about fine tuning is shorter prompts, which reduces costs and can improve speed. So based on these results, I think that a good case can be made to experiment with some fine tuning. In order to fine tune GPT, you'll need to have an OpenAI account and an API key. Go to platform.openai.com and click sign up, then create or log into your account. Once this is done, go to the dashboard and then in the left sidebar, click fine tuning. Thankfully, OpenAI has a very nice user interface for fine tuning, which makes this process extremely easy. When you're on the fine tuning page, click create, and here you'll be able to enter all the information and data you need to fine tune your model. The first thing you'll do is select the base model to train and the most recent version of GPT 3.5 we have is 0125 at this time. So we're going to select that. And then here we're going to add the training data. So we can see that OpenAI wants this in a JSON L file. If we go to the documentation, we can see exactly how the data should be structured. We'll break down the specific example from the docs. Each sample in your data is a JSON object. That JSON object contains a key called messages, the value of which is an array. Each array has the key role and content. Role can be either system, user, or assistant. System is the initial instructions that you give to the model in order to steer it in a certain direction, or provide it with context, or set the tone. User is the message or the prompt that you send the model, and assistant is the response you get from the model. I created a Python script to convert my data from the CSV file into the proper format in JSON-L. I did this for both my training and my validation data sets. Now I can add my training data, and optionally, I can also add my validation data. 
I can add a suffix to the model name just so I can identify it. And then for all of these other parameters here, like seed, bat size, learning rate, and number of epochs, I'm just going to keep those at the defaults. And I'll click Create. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the model to train. Okay, the model is now finished training. This took about an hour and 20 minutes. OpenAI recommends 50 to 100 training samples for fine tuning. I'm using 600 training samples, so that's 100 samples per class, which may be a little overkill, but I have the data. I'm gonna to go to the left sidebar here and click Playground. And this is where I can experiment with the different models and prompts. When I click on this drop down here, this is where I can see the selection of models that I can choose from. And right here you can see the Fin News fine tuned model that I just trained. So I'm gonna click on this and accessing this model from code is really exactly the same as accessing any other model. Up here on the right, I'm gonna click the view code icon and we can see here the only difference is that I'll use my fine-tuned model name instead of GPT-40 or 3.5 Turbo or whatever I would normally be using. But everything else is identical. And now that this model is trained, I can go to the final testing. I tested all three of these models on 600 testing samples. And the final result for the fine-tuned GPT-3.5 model was 98%. So it completely crushes the untrained 3.5 Turbo model and it also exceeds the very strong results of GPT-40. But in addition to the better accuracy, there's also lower cost. The prompt is only about 10 to 15% of the size. So the cost for processing a thousand samples with the fine-tuned model is about 21 cents compared to over 350 for GPT-40. So lower cost, better accuracy. This is a great example of where fine-tuning can really add a lot of benefits to your application. Of course, this is just one simple example of fine-tuning. There are many other applications and use cases I'd be very interested in hearing about some of your experiences with fine tuning, or if you have any ideas for use cases that you would like me to make a video on, post something in the comment and I'll be happy to take a look. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.